This is like my first time coding live, so I'm just going to say that I'm going to be a bit slower than I normally am coding, and I'm going to seem stupider <laughs> because I don't know how to talk and code at the same time, like at all, and I don't know when the right time to talk is and when the right time to code is, so I'm sure that I'll just be bouncing back and forth. Oh, but finally, I'm in the software and game development. I'm actually writing software. Look at that. Writing software in the software and game development. First person to ever do it, baby. No one's ever done it before. I'm the first. Everyone would come to the software and game development to play Minecraft or to play Amogus. I'm actually the very first streamer to actually stream coding in the programming category on Twitch. Real story. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to have it have an out directory that's different. Outer. Yeah. And then I want to uncomment this. Also, my font size is huge, <laughs> but it shows better on YouTube videos. So I have to do it. Um, and then I'm just going to call this the dist folder, this dist, and then I'm going to go into, let's say like index.ts, and then I'm going to do like console.log hello world. I'm also using Copilot. We're learning so many things about me. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to go into our package JSON, and then we're going to run npm run dev, and it crashed. It cannot find index.js. Well, that's because you're not supposed to find index.js. You're supposed to find index.dist.js. Uh, you know what? I think I really need to run TSC first. So npm run build so that it eats the config again or something. Ah, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Easy fix, easy clap. I needed to run this command on line nine here. Okay. What's the easiest way to do this that I want to check? So maybe let's go to index.ts here and let's review what we learned real quick. Uh, of course, again, OBS isn't going to do what we want. So what we decided to do was to lose all of our content and then scroll down. Uh, we want to do this, I think, in order. So we are going to want to do one. Uh, we're not doing anything with indexing, really. So we're going to select all all file names from a directory to embed each file name and embed our query. Uh, let's, let's separate this. So collect all file names from a directory, embed each file name, three, embed our query, four, choose the closest k matches five go into those files and embed the documents text six uh well wait five a chunk if required and we'll talk about this later but if this is greater than token threshold jr all token threshold oh my god i have this hilarious tweet about jr all token i have to find it really quickly it's been an awful terrible no good week but listening to my teenage daughter convince my youngest child last night that jr all token's real name was jolkin rolkin rolkin tolkin <laughs> was absolutely priceless this is a goaded tweet this is a, this is a top tweet so yeah so we are chunking if required if we reach our token threshold and then six is to um Mark, do cosign, you know, choose the best match for as sentence level embeddings for document. Okay. I think that that's our algorithm and I can definitely do this in a week and I can definitely make a really cool slideshow for my YouTube channel on Friday and it'll definitely get at least five views, three of which are from family members. Hey, grandma. <laughs> and no one else is watching my shit. Um, even though that's not true. I've, I've had a few people talk to me and comment on things and stuff like that. So it's slow, but the stuff that I'm doing, I think think is valuable and I think is unique. And maybe I'm just copium and telling myself that, but I, I, I believe it. And I think that there's a lot of value here and I'm going to continue to, to, to drive it. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is go to the internet and copy <laughs> aggressively, uh, how to do an API call from open AI. Actually let's, let's set up our structure first. So let's say that we have const files and then we're going to be like, um, George, G George Washington.ext. And then that's going to be have the text. George Washington was the first one. Copilot's insane, dude. <laughs> uh, what's your deal? I guess I have to do it as like a whole object, right? So, okay. Let's uh, do another one for sure, John Adams. And let's do another one for chocolate smoothies, chocolate milkshakes. All right. Let's do one for NASA. And let's do one for Elgato. <laughs> 
lights. Elgato streamer gear. <laughs> Elgato. Elgato stream deck. Hardware device. Yes. Save. Okay. So now we have some files. We have George Washington, John Adams.txt, chocolate milkshake.txt, NASA.txt, Elgato stream decks.txt. So going back to Obsidian to remind myself, we need to already embed them. <laughs> okay. So I do need to do the, the uh, open AI thing. I was hoping to put that off because I have to do a lot of Google searching. Okay. So I'm going to go to documentation. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to run npm install open AI, which will install the open AI package for us, which is great. Um, and then I'm going to go to, okay. I'm making requests. Hey, Pog. Oh, I think I have one for dot end too. I think I have a snippet for this. I do. Do I not have dot end installed? Yeah, I do. Why did it remove all the other packages? What? There were other packages here and it just, it got rid of them. It just ate them. I don't, it removed 129 packages. Why? Why, why did it do that? Okay, whatever. Um, I guess we run it again. Well, let's just take away the open AI. Is there something I'm missing? Is it because I didn't use the safety? Okay. Oh, no, no, it kept open AI this time. And it added the 129 packages back. <laughs> somewhere, okay, somewhere along the way, when I added npm op install open AI, it like just got rid of them. Maybe it was because the package JSON had the overwrite problem that it was talking about. I think that actually might be the, the problem. Um, okay. So let's call this const main, and then we'll do async here, and then I'll just paste this and then console.log that response, and then I'll hit alt shift, uh, alt shift, uh, alt shift. Shift F. I won't hit Alt Shift F. Okay, and now I'm gonna run main here, and what we should see is a bunch of objects. Great. Okay, <laughs> maybe like response.data. Yeah, cool. Um, that's great. So now we need to embed. So we need to go to the documentation for this. Okay, so I'm gonna do the Chrome City and thing, and it ain't gonna work. Oh wait, no, I can't because VSC. Okay, so I'm just looking at the documentation right now. <laughs> I didn't set up a key combine for VSC yet, so I'm not gonna bother doing it, and I probably won't do it until like Wednesday. Um, usage, full API documentation. So no JS, create embeddings. Nice. So these are our files. So we're basically going to move through the file names and then just uh, put that as the input. So let's say, let's just do the first one for now, just so we can see files zero dot name. And then, ooh, look at that. We got our data object embedding array, our model and our usage all in one go, just like that. Easy as pi, if pi were easy. All right. So now we have our embedding for our file name and what was it that we were trying to do i'm already forgetting so we want to embed each file name then embed our query and then choose the closest match using cosine similarity okay so let's say that we have all of our file embeddings array here which will be empty and then we're gonna do yeah that's actually good uh no we don't need that oh, so close um hmm. uh oh uh so so that's going to run against one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's fine. It's only running against five. So maybe I can just log the files out here, see what that looks like. Great. So we have five objects here, which means that I'm literally going to comment this out so it doesn't actually run so that we don't have to hit it every time because we're going to get a cosine similarity package. Cosine similarity node. If it seems like I'm cruising through this, I am a little bit because I've already done this stuff before. Like I said like three or four times <laughs> so this this is not new to me <laughs> what I'm doing right now um what is new to me is the method that I'm doing to avoid using a database at all and the pros and cons of doing such a thing especially when you have a ton of files so I still might end up embedding the file names and then just like once every 24 hours just re-embedding all the file names and skipping over the ones that are already in the database uh I don't know I guess I could use like a set or something because all file names are kind of into, are unique. So I could just say like, yo, set dot has this and then set dot has that. And if that's true, then I don't need to re-index it. And if it's not, then I re-index it. Um, in the future, like I said, there will be Chrome open next to VSC, but I cannot be bothered to do that right now. I'm kind of tired already and I want to get through this part. So let's say that we also have a query here saying like um, the revolution, the revolutionary war, right? So the revolutionary war is not in our 
our file names at all. Now you see it, now you don't type situation, right? We have to embed our query and then we need to run cosine similarity. So we'll do the similarity. Okay, so let's say that our const scores is equal to an empty array. And then let's say that our const query embedding is equal to, nope, uh, don't, I just don't wanna do this. Okay, so now I have the query, the query embedding uh, that tried to open this overview file when I click this for some reason. The scores, which is empty, the similarity. And basically now all I need to do is run this similarity against the file embeddings for const file of uh, file. I guess the file embeddings is the same like, so I guess I could just do this all here and then just push the score in real time, right? So I could just uncomment this stuff. And then when I'm also doing the file embeddings, just pushing the response data, I can actually just do the similarity check here. So I can do like similarity of query embedding dot data and response embedding dot data. Wait, but that wasn't right, right? It was just data. What was the straight of it? Data dot embedding. Hmm. What you talking about, Willis? Uh, oh, so it's data. Data zero. What? Object list. Data is a list. Ooh, uh, why not? Ooh. Okay, maybe if I could do like dot data dot embedding zero. Oh my God. <laughs> what the hell? Object embedding does not. So it is, it is just data then. The thing is we're looking at the data object dot data dot data zero dot embedding. All right, let's try it for each. Yeah, it doesn't. I think that the, the documentation or the the typing is wrong. Okay, I'm gonna just try and get it to log this and it's gonna yell at me and I'm gonna say ignore. Okay, yeah, I just had to do the TS ignore. It's there, it's just not showing up on the, the this object here, this response data enter. Okay, whatever. Um, So query embedding response actually, because we only need to embed our query once and then we're gonna get that get this thing and do the same thing. How did it work there? <laughs> okay, wait a second. Is it because it's supposed to go here? Bro, where do you, what do you mean, bro? Here? What would make you happy <laughs> here and here? This, this TypeScript is so frustrating sometimes. It's like it could be, oh, it could be, a, it just could be, I don't know. If query response dot data. Oh Lord. Oh God. What? <laughs> I just said it's not, it's going it to have to be in there. Oh my God. Uh, okay. I have to do it the other way though. There. There. Okay. So now <laughs> we can finally do our similarity between our query embedding and our embedding here. Const similarity score. It's going to be equal to similarity of our embedding and our query embedding. Okay, so this is like a particular programming problem, but sometimes naming things is really weird. Like I did similarity and similarity score here, even though this is returning a similarity score. So then you could call it similarity. You could call it similarity score, but you can't call it similarity actually because the package name is called similarity. So it's just like naming things in, in this thing is so hard. Like query embedding, like I struggled even just with query response there, just like minimally in my head. I feel like that should be something Thing that's a top priority copilot app is something that actually just suggests names <laughs> for the thing that it is. Maybe I'll build that on stream one day. I don't know if I feel like it. Um, okay, so now we have our similarity score and then we're gonna push our similarity scores to our scores. Then we're gonna push that, that's fine too. And then max score, max score index. Yes, yes. Hold, hog, George Washington dot text. Let's go, let's fucking go. <coughs> let's change it to uh, which dot TV. And it should return Elgato Stream Deck text. Elgato Stream Deck. Let's go. Yes. Okay. So here I'm gonna end it here because my brain is fried and I have nothing left in the tank. And 